Hello and welcome to this tutorial on uh, using a Gantt chart template in Microsoft Excel. So as you can see in front of you here, you've got Microsoft Excel, you've got rows that go across and you've got columns going up and down and we've got the cells which are the individual bits here. Now to do the template you go to File, New, type in here Gantt and we're looking for this one here, Gantt Project Planner. Open that up. And you'll see that it's got this pre-populated set of uh, information here. And all of these cells have got the formula in. That's absolutely fine. And we can submit that to the exam board. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a row here, which will become clear why in a second. And I'm going to move this information up to there. I'm going to bring this information here down to there. Now remember that this information here is your key. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Just get rid of that there. And I'm going to change the word periods to hours because we know that we've got 20 hours to complete this work. I'm going to change this here to hours highlight. Okay. And I'm now going to go across and after AG, which is the 26th hour, I'm going to delete that because we're allowed 20 hours ish. Uh, but if we're going over a quarter of that time in addition, then, then there are going to be questions asked. Okay, so started to make it look a little bit more personal to me. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change it to my uh, title. So give it a random name. You'll use the one that is it, your R013 coursework title. Okay, and now we've got some information in here that's not really needed. So I'm going to insert, I'm going to see here there's a column. Okay, I'm just going to copy this information here into this column here. I'm going to change this to ID and I'm going to provide an ID to every activity that I do. Uh, so ID 1 and I'm going to use this drag and drop down here. Okay, so ID 2, highlight 1 and 2, drag and drop down and so on and so forth and we'll see as we fill the activities which ones we need. Okay, I'm also going to add in here another one, insert, copy that, paste that. And as you can see, I've copied the plan start across. I'm going to change the word plan start there to dependencies, and all become clear why in a second. So dependencies. Okie dokie. I like this being in capitals. I'll probably put that in capitals so it looks like it should. Now then, I'm going to start going down here. I'm going to start filling in the, uh, the activities that I've done. So user requirements, constraints, resources, mitigation so on and so forth I'm not going to do all of them because you get the general idea now I'm gonna take out this data here okay and I'm looking here so this represents the hour that you start so the plan start the hour that you plan to start that activity would be hour one okay and I expect that to run for one hour I started it in hour one, actually. It actually took me one hour and I've completed it. You'll see that that's changed color. Now, constraints. This, I plan to start in hour one and I plan for it to take me one hour. I actually started it in hour two and it took me one hour and now it's 100% complete. And what you can see here is that this legend up here, this key, is telling me that when I plan to do it and when I actually did it and how much I've got done is all determined by this information here. And what we should see is over time, this is a working document, so you're only going to be able to complete this up to the activity that you've completed so far. And this working document over time will become populated all the way down to the, the end of your project and will be created like across the screen. Don't worry if you end up doing something earlier in your Gantt project and it doesn't go in a, in a ladder formation. That's absolutely fine, so don't panic about that. One last thing before I go about dependencies. Now, dependencies mean that that task, that activity, can't be completed without a prior activity being completed first. The analogy I can give of that is you can't build a house until you've built the foundations. So the building of the actual walls of the house can't be built until I've built the foundations beneath the ground. It just doesn't work. So the walls are dependent on the foundations being completed first. So user requirements, that has 
no dependencies because I have to do that first. Constraints. Well, my constraints are dependent on my user requirements. So I'm going to put in there the ID number of the activity that it is dependent on. Resources. Well, that's going to be requirement on the uh, user constraints and on the user requirements. So I put both in there. And you should see that these begin to work their way up as you go along.